Hi everyone, welcome. I'm down here in my wormery and I'm preparing to feed a couple bins. Last time I fed these bins I was running a little short on bedding, but I've since replenished my supply. You can see my little supply of pre-made bedding is over here. That it combines moisture and leaves and uh, stuff like that with just some shredded paper and cardboard, which I've got a backup supply of here. Quite a bit of it as you can see. So I've gone from not having any to having a whole bunch now. And last time these two systems that we're going to feed today got fed 12 days ago. The only bedding I gave them was leaves across the top surface. Today we're going to try to compensate for the lack of them getting no bedding or hardly any bedding last time by giving them a nice generous application of bedding with their feeding. So I'm going to get these guys up on the bench and we're going to get them fed. So let's get to work. In addition to being really generous with the bedding today, I'm going to be pretty generous with the food too. And there's quite a nice assortment of things in here, including some leftover pumpkin from last season. And this could very well be the final little bit of it. I thought I, had, thought I had run out, but I found some mixed in with some other veggies. So I figured let's give it to them here. And man, this has a good bit of weight to it. So I'm going to be giving them half. Half goes into this system, half goes into the other system. Huh. It would appear that we had at some point laid out a top covering of newspaper here. <laughs> which the worms have completely destroyed. Wow. That's pretty cool. Maybe, you know, maybe that's just proof positive that how important bedding is, you know, if you don't give them bedding with each feeding, they just go after some other source of carbon-heavy food. So it's a good thing that we're going to be able to give them quite a bit today. Like we did last time, we're just going to collect up these leaves that we sprinkled across the top surface last time and use it as the foundation or combine it with the fresh bedding we're going to put in to make the foundation for today's feeding. And you know, since it's going to be a lot of bedding and it's going to be a lot of food, it does feel like I got to make a pretty good size opening down the middle of this container to, to make sure we've got plenty of room for all that stuff in here. So. I'm going to be keeping that in mind as I come in here to see how they're doing. I do remember when we came in here last time to feed, they were getting a whole bunch of pieces of, I think I've got a bunch of it here too. This is like bits and pieces of cauliflower stem, leaves and stems, stuff that had been frozen just like it is now. And it's just the sort of stuff that you wouldn't expect to see any leftovers of. Once those leaves and stems begin to thaw out, they become all mushy and gooey and the worms probably gobble it up one, two, three. And that's in contrast to the, um, the other types of foods that we found in here as leftovers last time already. These corn cobs were in here last time and I can already smell a little trace of one of the other leftovers we encountered last time we were in here, which was a couple limes, which dated back to the previous feeding and just the fact that I can smell it doesn't mean we're going to find a big piece of it, although it would be interesting to see. Last time they were almost still intact, and we did sort of, you know, disturb them a little bit, and they were breaking apart a little bit, but they were, for the most part, holding together still. And I did wonder about the, um, the limes, whether we're going to still see traces of them in here today. I'm definitely smelling it, and it's kind of a nice, pleasant odor. The limes went in when these systems were 100 days of age. Then last time we came in, the systems were 112, and now another 12 days later, 124 days of age. Kind of made me wonder, how long is it going to take for those limes to eventually get broken down and eaten? And I didn't really put them in any specific place where I'd be able to just go back and zero in on them the next time, but my nose knows they're still here in, at least in trace amounts. But I'm not going to go overboard trying to track down the leftovers of the lime. If we bump into it, that's nice. But I'm more about just getting in here to give these euros a nice, generous portion of fresh bedding and a nice, generous feeding. Oops. 
Did I just? <laughs> I saw something else that launched besides that little worm that stuck to the wall and it was just a little piece of bedding material. I just worried that I might have launched a worm out of the bin. You gotta be careful when you're just sort of sifting through and moving stuff here and there. Okay. All right, we've definitely made ourselves quite a good size hole down here. I'm still smelling lime, but I don't really think we've seen any leftovers of it. That's okay. Yeah, we've definitely made ourselves a nice large opening down here. This is some leftover newspaper, quite crumbled up. I guess by being crumbled up, it's going to really limit worm traffic in and out of the material, so it doesn't hurt to sort of uncrumble it a little bit. So now over here, we collected not only sort of reclaimed top covering leaves that had been sprinkled out across the top at the end of the last check-in. We also collected up whatever leftovers we were able to find, and at this point it was mainly corn cobs. I don't think we really saw much, if anything, of other leftovers. This is also corn cob. So before we drop in the food, I think we're going to start in with a little bit of the fresh bedding to go right in underneath the foods that were given them. This way, as these foods that were given them begin to thaw out and melt and drop their juices down into the bin, all of this fresh and somewhat sterile bedding will get inundated with those yummy juices, making the stuff virtually irresistible to the worms. So here we go. I'm going to just start scooping. It was a mix of not only pumpkin bits, there's also some stuff that I encountered as I was going into the nearby farmer's market the other day. Some, I think it's broccoli rob stems. It appeared that somebody had gone in there to buy some of that stuff and they hacked off what they were going to take home and they left all these stems out front, which seemed to me like something that worms would probably enjoy nibbling on. So I took it home. And this is the last of it. I've already fed it elsewhere. And then the other stuff I have for them are just some of these bits of cauliflower stems and leaves. I tell you, once I drop it in here, it certainly doesn't seem quite as much. And I think the reason it's got so much weight is because all this stuff just has a, a fairly high degree of moisture content to it. I'm going to sprinkle the freshly added foods with some of this grit here. The grit that I use is just pulverized eggshell. And then I think we can start coming in with the leftovers, mainly corn cobs. I don't recall seeing much, if anything else, amongst the leftovers we encountered. And then these leaves, nicely seasoned 12 day old top covering leaves, which at this point are just going to turn into food. And if my guess is right, these worms are craving some good carbon rich food based on what we saw happen to that top covering piece of newspaper that appeared to just be almost completely nibbled away. And now I think we've got plenty to cover up with here. So let's do so and before we close up shop here we haven't really had a chance to peek in on the outer edges of the bin so why don't we do that as well. At the same time we're going to have that opportunity to also aerate the material out in the outer edges of the bin. So let's scoop into the outer edges and see how things look. Out here I typically expect to find fewer leftover scraps of bedding and food. Because if I keep feeding down the middle and pushing everything out, then what I usually find out on the outer edges is mainly dominated by just castings. But I do try to sprinkle in little bits of other stuff into there so that the entire bin has all kinds of materials that the worms could be nibbling on. Okay, see some of these worms are beginning to crawl on the walls of the container. They probably don't appreciate this manhandling <laughs> of the system, so let's not 
put them into a whole lot more undue stress. My only objective here was just to take a glance at how things out here look in the outer edges. Aerate it and then just return it the way we found it. Perhaps just a little bit fluffed up, which I think helps in general. Just making sure there's nothing that's turning kind of muddy or sticky or clumping together. And I think last but not least, let's go back with what we have been doing lately is just grabbing my supply of fresh leaves and sprinkling it out across the top. Very cool, very cool. Now, one thing I noticed these systems were lacking was a feeding zone indicator, which is kind of tradition in most of my worm systems. <laughs> so this one was kind of touching some of the foods that I bought, I bought down here. This other one I just took from my supply of coffee filters. So this way we'll have a nice, easy way to relocate where we last fed. And you know, top covering newspaper, I don't think we're going to sweat it. We'll just stick with um, this bubble wrap covering for now. And perhaps at some point in the future we'll go back to covering up with some sort of a, a newspaper. But why don't we move on to bin number two and get them fed. Alright, so now when I'm feeding bins this way, like in pairs, sort of a buddied up system, I, I typically manage these buddy bins in fairly similar, if not identical way, so I expect to find almost identical outcomes. And here too, we're starting to see signs of what had been a top covering piece of newspaper draped across the top, which the worms have taken advantage of as food at this point. And same as we saw in the other bin, it's just a little collection of dry leaves that had been out here on the top. The ones on the outer edge, as you can see, are still somewhat dry because the bubble wrap doesn't go edge to edge. So that stuff was able to avoid getting consumed by the worms. But on this go around, the stuff's going to go right down into the bottom as the foundation for today's feeding and turn into worm food, I guess, at this point. So let's start checking out how they're doing. I wonder if we're going to find lemon bits in here or lime bits in here. Probably not. But I'm all I'm just curious if I'm going to be able to sense the um scent of the the lime in here as we saw in the other bin. Okay. These corn cob bits, I don't know when they were added. I don't think I've seen any in my supply of worm food, so I think I've more or less tapped out my fairly abundant supply that I had of corn cob. But the stuff takes a long time to break down and the worms are doing it gradually. They seem to like to crawl down into the middle of these things and nibble out the inside which is a little bit more soft and easy to eat. But in time they'll work the whole thing down. I'm sure we're going to find a similar quantity of leftover corn cob bits in here. But so far I'm not sensing the smell of lime yet. So maybe the limes that were placed into this system were perhaps just a little bit more degraded or already starting to break down. So I wouldn't have thrown them in here if they weren't already ready showing signs of decay and... Um, just basically not being suitable for human consumption any longer. So perhaps the reason I'm not smelling any lime in here is either because I just haven't bumped into it yet, or maybe it actually did progress to that stage where the worms were able to work it down already. All right, sorry, I got distracted there. I was about to show a little something here that I was checking out. It's the stem of a stem of a pumpkin. It's always interesting to see how the little worms sort of gather on it. It almost feels like I might be able to... Oh, darn it. I was about to say I try not to do that. I try not to break apart things that I'd rather just observe the breakdown of over time. But it did break so readily that I can't blame myself for being too rough on it. It would just happen eventually anyway. 
And as you can imagine, the stem of a pumpkin is basically nothing more than just a piece of wood. Perhaps it's a little bit more porous and not as dense as other types of wood like you would get if you were chopping down a tree, but still I treat the stem of a pumpkin as basically wood and it's pretty impressive to see how they managed to break it down over time. But you know, something like this object here, these sort of things I generally remove from the systems. This is a uh, the pit from maybe a peach or something and I do have a little collection of these sort of things set aside which with which I was you know going to attempt some sort of a test at some point but I I've been lately removing them from my systems when I encounter them and I'll just drop it over into my little collection of pits that I have I got a good maybe gallon and a half container full of those things so at some point soon I'm going to have to figure out what I'm going to do with all that stuff because it's just sitting here for months and months <laughs> just trying to come up with an idea about what to do with this stuff I have actually thought about just sort of soaking them letting them sit in water to see if they'll eventually soften up to the point where maybe I can consider introducing worms to the stuff and maybe the worms will be able to somehow get at this stuff I really don't know what to expect from that though if I were to go that route all right, once again, we've created a pretty good size opening in here to go ahead and drop in another fairly generous portion of fresh bedding onto which we can begin piling in today's feeding. So this portion, I guess, includes some of the frost that came along with the stuff that was sitting in these plastic bags. So I really went into about two or three different plastic bags to pull out a little bit of this, a little bit of that, make a little bit of a combination, and then I went ahead and I refilled each of those bags with the equal portion so that I can just sort of grab a bag and go. But since that the bag always tends to attract a whole bunch of this material sticking to it, I, I figured maybe I'd be better off putting it into the plastic container here so it'd be easier for me to sort of scoop out and scrape out rather than having all this stuff adhere to the inside of a plastic bag so let's finish oh, a little bit of surplus bedding going back in like we did earlier in the other system too with the top covering leaves okay looking pretty good I think we've more or less collected all the reclaimed bits of food scraps and this will be just a chunk of the pumpkin stem I don't know if it's the, the larger piece at this point or the smaller piece, and I'm questioning whether I'm going to even be able to recognize these two things. I just found the other one. <laughs> As I find one, I seem to lose the other one, but I'm questioning whether I'm going to be able to even identify these things as pumpkin stems going forward at this point, since they are just so fragile I might break it apart and think I just cracked open a uh, like a corn cob or something. So, I don't know, I guess those those pieces of pumpkin stem might track back to last year's Halloween. And we're now in November of the following year. So those pumpkin stems, if they're not a year old yet, they're close to it. So, that's pretty cool to be able to track the progress of a material that actually takes a year to break down. And, you know, since this system is not even maybe a third of a year... 124 days so that's almost exactly one third of a year that um that stem of the pumpkin must have followed the worms from system to system to system and it's kind of nice to know that we're not going to have to move those stems further with the worms into their next home wherever that may be when they're finished here <laughs> i believe that those pumpkin stems will actually meet their demise here with these European night crawlers. Okay. So let's um let's top off the same way we did in the other bin with some nice fresh leaves as a top covering. Once again we're gonna not bother with a top covering sheet of newspaper even though the worms seem to enjoy it. I feel like we've compensated nicely by giving them a whole bunch of fresh bedding down the middle as well as a, a refresh of the top covering leaves. 
and then maybe at some point in the future we'll come back to using top covering newspaper but for now I think we're done I'm just trying to remember did we put any grit in <laughs> sometimes I remember sometimes I forget but you know I do have to treat certain points in time as the point of no return I'm not going to excavate here to drop in the grit at this point they're going to have to do, deal with whatever grid is already present within the system. And I think that brings us to the end. So I'll take care of getting stuff here cleaned up and put away. But before I do that, let me just really quickly say thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, as always, please don't forget to leave me a quick thumbs up before you go. That's always very much appreciated. Please also consider subscribing to the channel. That's really appreciated as well. All right, everyone. Have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.